as promised, this is Jim here on the Crazy Coyote Country Morning Show, uh, added edition. And as promised, we have a very special guest in here this morning as we lead up to, of course, the uh, the BCS Bowl coming up Monday night, which will feature your Alabama Crimson Tide with the rematch that we've all been dying to have with LSU. We have with us the man of all seasons, the voice of Alabama Crimson Tide, also the voice of the Motor Racing Network, Mr. Eli Gold. How you doing, sir? I am well, sir. How are you this morning? Oh, I am doing fantastic, doing fantastic. Let me first tell you that we really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come and spend a little time with the WKNU Coyote Country uh, crew here, and uh, we've got a lot of people who love Alabama in our area. Well, we appreciate that. We we all know it's a very fertile area for both NASCAR coverage and for uh, college football and Bama in particular, so it's great to be on with you guys today. Oh, we really do appreciate it. I appreciate you bringing up uh, the fact that, you know, you are the voice of the Motor Racing Network as well. And uh, 36 years, you've been a busy gentleman. Yes. I started when I was two. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, yeah, maybe not. But, yes, I've been with NASCAR and with MRN for 36 years now. And uh, looking forward to starting another season. We have the Rolex 24 at Daytona, the 24-hour sports car endurance race that begins uh, in just about uh, two weeks from now. And then, of course, down for the Speed Week stock car portion in mid-February. So, uh, you know, one season rolls into the next. You just never seem to rest, it doesn't seem like. And, of course, you've got your you've got a regular call-in show. The, uh, right. We, we do a show in Birmingham in the mornings. We have our NASCAR Live call-in show on MRN on Tuesday nights. So, uh, but, you know, when you're a freelance broadcaster, which is what I am, uh, you have to work. If you don't work, you don't get paid. Uh, it would be great if they did pay you for not working, but it doesn't quite happen that way. So, uh I don't like to let too many days go by without work. Well, we and I tell you what, those of us that uh, love to listen to sports on the radio, when a lot of us here believe we get some of the very best coverage. In fact, I say I, I advise our listeners to uh, even if you do get it on the old TV set, why not just turn the TV set uh, noise down, tune into one hundred six point three, and let Eli Gold be your uh, be your eyes there on the field for you because you can see a whole lot more than uh, we tend to see on. TV a lot of times, in my well, opinion. Well, we appreciate that. You know, it's a different approach. Uh, uh, both NASCAR and football are wonderful radio sports, probably NASCAR even more so, because, you know, TV, they'll keep tabs on, you know, the top 10, top 12, but if there's a battle for 19th, you know, we'll talk about it on MRN radio. Uh, we, we are the broadcasters for all 43 drivers, uh, not just for the guys running up front, and everybody has fans out there, so, uh, but I think both uh, NASCAR and college football are both sports that are really, can thrive on radio. Absolutely. Having the, one of the most recognizable voice in, voices in sports radio, as you do, I mean, with 24 years as the voice of the Alabama Crimson Tide and uh, 36 years with the voice of uh, MRN Radio, uh, I would imagine if you go to an event just to attend and start talking a little bit, you might be recognized. Well, it happens a lot. But that's the key. If I sit there and hush up, nobody knows me because <laughs> one of those, you know, that old joke of I have a face for radio. Uh, but, you know, sometimes folks won't know who I am, and then all of a sudden I'll say something, and they'll look around and, and say, hey, you know, we know you. But that's, you know, I've been blessed. It's, it, you know, there I've been blessed to have a, uh, a, a recognizable voice, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say. But you're right, other than I don't get a lot of folks wandering up to me, but uh, I do when I start talking, I guess. Yes, sir. I tell you, and you've got a lot of people that think a lot of you. I uh, I just want to take just a moment to uh, speak a little bit about Alabama Crimson Tide football. Of course, the the on the you know we do appreciate Motor Racing Network making you uh, you know making this possible, putting us together here, and. Uh, with the big game coming up Monday night, the BCS Bowl, this will be uh, will be a big event, um, and we're going to be airing it live right here. Of course, you're going to be on whatever it is, fifty five different net, you know, fifty five different stations across the Alabama Crimson Tide uh, Network Monday for right, the BCS plus Bowl. satellite radio as well. Sure. Wow. So you're on satellite too? Okay, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. 
But you know, I was I was speaking with you just a little bit before we went on the air about how how the uh, you know Alabama. Uh, NASCAR racing is such an integral part of our area as it is across a lot of the southeast and now really taking it national, I think. the uh, You know, growing up, I did in, in Atmore uh, during the era or the, you know, the final final years, I guess, era of, uh, of Bear Bryant. But that's an era that has really never went away. The shadow of the bear, how big is that at Alabama now, in your opinion, still, even still? Well, it's still a factor because you play at Bryant-Denny Stadium, which is located on Bryant Drive, across from the Bryant Conference Center, across from the Bryant Museum. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I mean, Nick Saban has established his spot, certainly, in Crimson Tide history. But it's no different than going to Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And you're on Lombardi Drive on one side of the stadium, and Holmgren Drive for Mike Holmgren is on the other side of the stadium. Uh, it's no different than going to Knoxville. And, you know, the media parking lot is on... Peyton Manning Pass, as they call it, and you got Philip Fulmer Drive. Um, it's you know you cannot and should not lose the history of your sport. Uh, New Yorkers still talk about Mickey Mantle in the most reverent of ways. Uh, you know Bob Costas, the NBC broadcaster, carries a Mickey Mantle baseball card in his wallet because he says everybody should always have a religious artifact on their person at all times. Uh, you can't and shouldn't lose the tradition of your sport. So Coach Bryant will always be part of what it is. But uh, at the same time, as generations move on to another generation to another generation, you know, obviously there are lots of people now who are ticket-buying members of the sports public who never were around for a Bear Bryant game. So, you know, but they know the history. So it's always going to be there. But uh, that does not concern, you know, Nick Saban in that he is establishing his own history and his own traditions at the university. Absolutely. Well, I was just going to uh, share with you, you know, uh, I know one avid Alabama fan who happens to be my niece, and just to show you that how it carries through, uh, she has a seven-month-old, which happens to be my great-nephew, that is named Bryant Grissett. So uh, I didn't know if you could give one of those famous Eli Gold hellos to Bear Bryant Grissett. Bear Bryant Grissett. Well, that's a great name, certainly, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are – members of that Bryant Club. They have their first name or their middle name is Bryant. As a matter of fact, I did an autograph signing not uh, that many months ago, and the young man came up to me, and his name was Bryant Denny whatever it was. His, his, <laughs> his family's name was not Stadium, but it was like, you know, Johnson, but he was Bryant Denny Johnson. So uh, that just shows you you know, we, we we always have to remember that in our communities. I was just on with a with a station in St. Louis just a little bit ago. In our communities, we don't have professional sports other than the two visits a year to ta to uh, Talladega. But you know, you you know, you don't have the the Rams, you don't have the St. Louis Blues, you don't have the St. Louis Cardinals, you don't have the Kansas City Royals and the Kansas City Chiefs to to battle for the sports page attention. Uh, you know, in our state, it's college, and that's why everything is zeroed in on the, co the college game, and you have a lot of folks like the Bryant Name Club that are uh, really, really very, very proud of what the heritage and history of the name is. Well, this is a big young man at seven months old. I think maybe he may uh, play a little football himself at some point. Wonderful, wonderful. I had just a couple of questions for you to, uh, to hit on a little bit. Um, this is something that come to my mind. I want to share with you that uh, as I was listening to the last meeting of uh, LSU and, and the Alabama Crimson Tide, um, I know that when you're when you are uh, announcing and, and taking care and being the voice and the eyes for all of us on NASCAR, you've got 43 drivers that you show no partiality to whatsoever. But I have to say that I felt almost as much sympathy for you near the end of that last meeting as I did for everybody else. I heard dejection in your voice. Well, you know, it's, it, it, you, you're with these kids from the two-a-day practices in August 
right through to now. And yes, I am emotionally invested in this university's football program. And the broadcast is slanted towards the Alabama fan who is listening. Uh, like you say, the NASCAR broadcast, well, I'm broadcasting for the benefit of all 43 drivers fans. Well, when I did uh, two weeks ago, I did the, the Dolphins and the Patriots. I really don't care who wins between the Dolphins and the Patriots. I was just there to broadcast the game and bring it to the folks who couldn't see it for whatever reason. Um, so I really don't give a rip who wins. Alabama, I care who wins. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough way to have to lose that ball game back in November. It, it, it hurt a little bit. It sure did. Well, I, I sensed it as I was listening to you and, uh, and, 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 and appreciated it because, I, you know, I, I feel like you really do have an interest, you know, an emotional investment, as you call it, into the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide football program. And, and these are real kids. These are real people out here. And, uh, of course, you know, they're, they're out there hustling and giving their best. Um, now, there was – in this game coming up, I mean, all the stars have aligned. I mean, I said it was almost like a Christmas tree sort of shedding as teams started falling from the rankings here and there from different uh, matchups getting beat. So all the stars have aligned. All the argument and all the, the uh, – Opinions have been made. It is LSU number one, Alabama number two. They will be meeting Monday in the uh, BCS Championship Bowl. Is there anything, in your opinion, that we may see different from Alabama as they face LSU the second time? Well, you know, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I was talking with Ozzie Newsom the other day, and he said in a rematch, you just ought to go out there, flip the coin, and play. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of big differences. Uh, there may well be some additional passes maybe to, to Brad Smelly, who only caught one pass in that first game uh, and has, of course, been a favorite target of A.J. McCarron this season. Uh, but, no, I mean, it's you're not going to reinvent the wheel. You just have to execute. And you have to keep. You have to finish, as Nick Saban likes to say. Uh, Bama kind of stalled once they got to the 30-yard line. Uh, couldn't get going. They were great between the 30s, but inside the 30s, the offense didn't do the job. Uh, you've also got to make sure you don't have mistakes. Uh, you don't need extraneous penalties because LSU doesn't need any help in winning this ball game. They're darn good. Bama doesn't need any help in winning this ball game. They are darn good. Neither team can afford mistakes because. Uh, you know, the other side will certainly take advantage of things very, very quickly. Well, it is. We're very excited. I know there's a lot of excitement going on as we get ready for this uh, with this bowl game. Um, and now you are going to have to rest up really quickly after this game because uh, January the 28th and 29th, you're going to be uh, you're going to be anchoring an unprecedented 18 hours of coverage from the season opening Rolex 24 at Daytona. Uh, how do you get geared up for 18 hours of NASCAR? Well, it's going to be very tough. Uh, we are doing 18 hours of that Rolex 24 for the first time ever. Uh, we've always done 9 or 10 hours. We are going to be joined by our sister network overseas, Radio Le Mans. They do the coverage of the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is the sports car endurance race over there. Uh, and some of their announcers are coming over. We're going to work in shifts uh, because of the clock being what it is. You know, when it's nighttime here, it's daytime there. So, uh, you know, we'll, our American crew will do the daytime stuff uh, in the United States, plus on the Internet and satellite radio. The European crew will do our overnight hours, which is their daytime hours back home. And then myself and their anchor man will co-anchor the uh, end of the broadcast. So it's going to be quite interesting. But uh, you know, I, we didn't. We did it last year for the first time, and we did about 11 hours of coverage. And the reaction and the reviews and people who were logging into the internet and going on satellite, it was staggering. I mean, they were sending us these numbers. There are 300,000 people listening wow. now, and you got a, you got 50,000 in Germany and this and that. And I thought they were full of baloney, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I just didn't buy any of that. Well, then the numbers at today's end were unbelievable, and uh, so that's what we're doing. We're doing 18 hours 
and that'll be you're right a week uh, two weeks after we wrap up here in new orleans but uh that's all right. A lot of fun. I'd rather do that than have a real job. <laughs> I hear you. Well, well, Eli, if you don't mind, I was, I was going to leave you with two things. Just leave it wide open for you. One, while Alabama Crimson Tide, of course, has a tremendous uh, following here in our area, NASCAR has tre- tremendous followings. We've got we've got fans of, of probably all 43 different drivers. We have different, we have fans here that, that pick one of their favorites and go with them. Um, I just wondered, though, also, and in addition to that, not only are are they fans of the sport? I believe you yourself have a lot of fans here. I wanted, if there's anything you wanted to say in particular to those people who uh, listen to you uh, across the uh, sports radio networks, no matter whether it's NASCAR, some NFL, or the Alabama Crimson Tide, if you want to say anything personal to them. And also, if you would, just as a warm-up, give us one of those Alabama Crimson Tide touchdown calls. Well, I can't do that. I don't do that except on game day. I save those. You're saving it. Okay. We hopefully will need a whole bunch of them come Monday night. But as far as our listeners, uh, we appreciate it very much, to say the least. Uh, You know, as I said to a lot of people, without our listeners, we have nothing. You know, somebody else might sign my paycheck, but I work for the listeners. I work for the people who tune in to the radio. They are my bosses, and uh, without them, we have absolutely nothing. So I do thank everybody who listens, be it on Alabama, be it on NASCAR, whatever it might be, and I I thank them for doing so because uh, they are the folks for whom I work. Even though they might not sign my paycheck, but they are really the people for whom I work, and I I thank them profusely. Well, listen... uh Eli, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us here on WKNU. Once again, we want to thank the Motor Racing Network for uh, putting this all together. And, folks, we want to remind you that you can hear Eli right here. Eli Gold, and hopefully we'll hear a lot of those touchdowns called coming up here Monday uh, the 9th at the BCS Championship Bowl as Alabama gets their second shot at LSU. And also, January the 28th through the 29th, you can hear 18 hours of Eli Gold as they take off the season opening Rolex 20 at Daytona Speedway. Eli, thank you so much for joining us here on WKNU, and uh, we look forward to hearing your broadcast, sir. Thank you. Great to be on in Bruton with you, and I wish everybody uh, a wonderful 2012, and thanks again for having me on. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Eli Go joining us right here on Coyote Country. And, of course, we have recorded this, so if there was any part of this you might have missed because somebody called you and said, hey, Eli Gold's on the radio. We well, did record this for a replay on our Monday show. And a uh, fantastic gentleman, very nice to take uh, to take the time to share with us here a little bit about himself and an interesting character as uh, we was learning there 24 years with the Alabama Crimson Tide, 36 years on the air with MRN Radio, plus doing some stints with the NFL, as you heard him indicate at a game that he had called there. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll return now to today's best country. And look, we are looking forward to January the 9th, the BCS Bowl, Roll Tide Roll.